Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the different Windows 7 editions. This comes from the Microsoft certification requirements of the 7680, where you're performing a clean installation. This is one of the very first requirements from the 7680 requirements document, and we're going to focus on identifying hardware requirements for Windows 7. If you've ever thought about buying Windows 7 or installing Windows 7 on your computer, you may have noticed there were many different editions of Windows 7. So we're going to talk about each one of these. We're going to go through Windows 7 Starter, Windows 7 Home Basic and Home Premium, and then we'll also talk about Windows 7 Professional, Ultimate, and Enterprise. It's going to be important that you understand the differences between all of these because in different environments you may have different requirements. And as we step through this video, you'll see that each one of these editions is a little bit different than the others. If you've ever bought a netbook that had Windows 7 already on it, it was probably running Windows 7 Starter. This particular edition was built exclusively for netbooks. It's really designed to fit on a very minimum type of hardware configuration. These Windows 7 Starter editions, for instance, don't have things like DVD playback or Windows Media Center built into the Windows 7 Starter Edition. Most netbooks don't even have DVD players on them, so it makes sense that obviously you wouldn't need the DVD playback functionality either. The Windows 7 running on netbooks, this starter version, also doesn't have some of the advanced graphics capabilities that come with Windows Aero. Now that makes sense because the graphics on these tiny little netbooks were not designed to have a lot of functionality. They are a bare bones portable system. So you also don't have things like internet connection sharing. There won't be people using this computer to hop onto a wireless network and get out to a wired internet connection, for instance. There's no web server on here and none of the enterprise technologies that you would traditionally think about like BitLocker or EFS or AppLocker or some of the other enterprise functions that you're going to learn about over this entire course. There is only a 32-bit version of Windows 7 Starter. You won't find 64-bit uh, versions of this. You also won't find versions of Windows 7 Starter that are able to use more than 2 gig of RAM. So as you can see, this version is really designed for a bare minimum system, which really fits perfectly into what we're doing with netbooks these days. One step up from Windows 7 Starter is a version called Windows 7 Home Basic. And if you've never seen this version before, that's probably because you don't live in an area that is an emerging market for Windows 7. So if you're in an already established market for Windows, you're never going to see this sold. In fact, you won't even be able to have this particular ver version activated. If you live in the United States and you try to activate Windows Home Basic, it won't let you. You only can be in one of the emerging markets, and there's not that many of them around the globe. This is very similar to the feature set of Windows 7 Starter. For instance, there's no v DVD playback. You don't get the Windows arrow. Certainly none of the enterprise functions are in here either. There is, however, a 64-bit version of Windows 7 Home Basic. It supports up to 8 gig of RAM, and it supports one physical CPU, one physical processor in a computer. Most likely, you will never run into Windows 7 Home Basic, but it's good to know that that version is out there. If you were to buy a new computer from a computer retailer or buy one from the internet, and you're buying it for your home or your home office, it may have on it and probably has on it Windows 7 Home Premium. This is the version that most consumers get. This is one you would get because it has DVD playback and it has the Windows Aero graphical front end and things like internet connection sharing and IIS web server, which if you're in a, a prosumer type environment or you're looking to do some things at home, those could be really useful to use when you're using Windows 7 Home Premium. But it's not designed for the enterprise. You're not going to get BitLocker. You're not going to get the encrypting file services. You're not going to get AppLocker or Branch Cache. And you cannot connect this version to a Windows domain. And if you're working in a large enterprise or even a small enterprise these days, they may have an Active Directory domain already set up 
this version will not be able to connect to and become a member of that Active Directory domain. So if you're working in a business environment, the Windows 7 Home Premium is probably not the version for you. This does, however, support 64-bit processors. I can have up to 16 gig of RAM and up to two physical CPUs in here. So some really nice capabilities. If you want a souped-up home computer, Windows 7 Home Premium may be the one for you. Windows 7 Professional was designed to be one step up ahead of a consumer version. It has all of the capabilities of the Windows Home Premium, but this version can actually connect to a Windows domain. That becomes pretty important if you're working in one of those environments where your computer really does need to be managed and have information that it can transfer back and forth to that domain. It supports not only those domain connections, but also things like remote desktop host and EFS. So some of those enterprise type functionalities for encryption, for remote access to the device are built into the Windows 7 Professional. But it's still missing some of the more advanced functions like BitLocker, AppLocker, and Branch Cache, and some others. So it's not a fully featured version of Windows 7, but it may fit the bill for most people who are working in an enterprise or small business or business type of environment. Again, a 64-bit version is supported along with those 32-bit versions. And you can support up to 192 gig of RAM with this version. So now we're really being able to take advantage of a lot of hardware in the Windows 7 Professional version. But there's still some features that we're missing, things we can add on. And we would look at Windows 7 Ultimate to fill in those blanks. With Windows 7 Ultimate, you get everything. This is a fully featured and complete version of Windows 7. And when you have Windows 7 Ultimate installed, you can be assured that you've got everything. You've got support to log into domains, to be a member of a domain, to have remote desktop and the encrypting file services, plus all of those other things that go along with being an enterprise platform, BitLocker, AppLocker, Branch Cache, and a number of the other enterprise capabilities there. Both 32 and 64 bit, bit versions are supported and up to 192 gig of RAM. And that's the same as the Windows 7 Professional version that we were just looking at. This version does everything. So if you have Windows 7 Ultimate on a machine, you can be assured that there's every possible functionality built into that edition of Windows 7. A version of Windows 7 that you cannot buy off the shelf is called Windows 7 Enterprise. Windows 7 Enterprise is exactly the same feature set as Windows 7 Ultimate. The same capabilities, the same remote desktop, the same branch cache, the same BitLocker, everything. It's exactly the same as Ultimate. The difference, though, is this version is designed for very large enterprises that already have a licensing agreement with Microsoft. And what that means is that if you're in a very, very large company, you're going to be giving Microsoft a certain amount of money every year to license Windows, and they're just going to give you one CD. Here's your Windows 7 Enterprise. You can load this on every single one of your computers or a certain number of your computers and just load it up. You don't go through the same licensing or necessarily the exact same licensing as a Windows 7 Ultimate or any of the other Windows 7 versions. So if you're in a big company, you're probably going to be using Windows 7 Enterprise. If you do not have have a licensing agreement with Microsoft, but you still want the same functionality as the Windows 7 Enterprise, simply use Windows 7 Ultimate. It is a one-for-one -one exact match to the feature set as Windows 7 Enterprise. Here's a summary of all these different Windows 7 editions that you can get. And I've just summarized everything we've gone through with the Starter, the Home Basic, the Home Premium, Professional, Ultimate, and Enterprise versions of Windows 7. You can see some of the capabilities we talked about I've put up here. If those capabilities are available in those versions, I've put a green check mark. If they're not available, I've put a red X. So things like being able to connect to a domain, you would only be able to do that with Windows 7 Professional, Windows 7 Ultimate, and Windows 7 Enterprise. There's no other versions that allow you to connect to a Windows domain. You can also see the difference in the memory and the availability here. You can see with a, a, a x86, which is the 32-bit version of the operating system, the amount of memory that's supported in all of these. And you can see you can only go up to 4 gig of supported memory when you're working in a 32-bit environment. If you're running the 64-bit version of Windows 7, then you have some other options. With Home Basic and all the way up into the Enterprise versions, 
you have a lot more memory you can use. And the 64-bit the, the versions of Windows 7 are really starting to catch on. You're seeing more and more of those as we, as we go along. One of the challenges you have with the 64-bit version surrounds the hardware support. But as more manufacturers get on board, I think you'll see a lot more people try to take advantage of some of the advanced capabilities and additional hardware support in that 64-bit version. Here are the minimum hardware requirements for Windows 7. I've broken these out into two sections, one that's the 32-bit version of Windows 7 and one that is the 64-bit version of Windows 7. You can see the processor requirements are the same between those two. You only need a 1 gigahertz processor to support Windows 7 at a minimum. There is a difference in the amount of RAM that's required. You'll need a 1 gigabyte of memory in a 32-bit version. The minimum is 2 gigabytes of memory if you're going to run the 64-bit version of Windows 7. And the disk requirements are almost the same. In the 32-bit version, you'll need 16 gigabytes of free disk space, and the 64-bit version requires 20 gigabytes of free disk space. You can see that the video requirements are exactly the same. This is a DirectX 9, which is a, a standardized format set of drivers for graphics devices. And you need a driver that supports the Windows Display Driver model. You'll see this abbreviated as WDDM. And it's version 1.0 is the version that was introduced with Windows 7. And that's the minimum version you're going to need to support Windows 7 running on any of the additions that we've seen so far. Let's review some of the things that we've gone through with our Windows 7 versions. The first question, which Windows 7 edition is not available in the United States? It's also not available in the United Kingdom, in Australia, and in other parts of the world that are not emerging markets. If it's an emerging market, then you'll probably see the version of Windows 7 Home Basic. But in places like the United States, which is certainly not an emerging market for Windows, you won't even have this version available to purchase anywhere. The next question is, which two Windows 7 editions support BitLocker? Well, we know that BitLocker is an enterprise functionality. It allows us to encrypt entire drives or entire USB keys or storage devices. That is an enterprise capability. So you're only going to see that on Windows 7 Ultimate and Windows 7 Enterprise. And the last question is how much memory is the minimum requirement for Windows 7 running in a 32-bit system, an x86 processor? The answer to that is one gigabyte of RAM. If you're running the 64-bit version, you need to double that and have two gigabytes of RAM. That covers some of the topics we needed to know for this video on Windows 7 editions. We've gone through all of those different editions of Windows 7. We understood some of the differences in capabilities between them, and we also understood a little bit more about the hardware requirements that we need to know before installing Windows 7. We have many, many more 70-680 Windows 7 configuration videos. You can see those, uh, visit our message boards, or send me a message on our website at ProfessorMesser.com.